Hey everybody and thanks for watching 3dmotive.com. I'm Bill Cladis and in this tutorial we'll be covering how to make a Sparks particle system inside of UDK. We'll be using Cascade, which is UDK's particle and visual effects editor, along with doing some cool tricks between Cascade and the material editor to, to really help bring this particle system alive. Now this is intended for intermediate levels. We're assuming that you have some basic knowledge with Cascade, the material editor, and an image editing program like Photoshop. So let's go ahead and get started by taking a look at what we'll be creating. Let's break down um, the different particles that we have going on here and what our setup is. If we go um, out of game mode, we can see that we, all ha we only have one emitter here, and that's emitting our sparks that are being pulled down by acceleration. Those sparks, those particles, then collide with this little collision mesh that I have here, which is just a simple test mesh. But once that collision happens, it kills the original particle and generates an event which talks to other emitters. And now those other emitters are secondary elements, right? We can see that splashback that's happening once the spark hits the ground. And that's generating also some of these little, these little ember balls that we have on the bottom here. So if we put it in freeze frame and go out of real time mode, we can see a couple of cool things that we're going to learn with materials here. We notice that the sparks are never really perfectly straight, and what that's doing is it's helping to prevent the repetitiveness of, uh, of perfectly straight lines. So it makes the sparks look a little more unnatural if we do that. So by doing this with the, within the material editor and using some parameters within Cascade, we can help break up that repetitiveness. Uh, additionally, we can see as, as I scrub around, um, we can see that everything is shimmering. We're going to do some cool uh, material tricks that are going to allow us to give the illusion that there's some cool internal energy and movement. Again, making this look a little more alive and to help prevent it looking too mechanical or unnatural. So we're doing all of this with just two textures, so we're being really conservative. We have a clouds P mask, and when I say P mask or gray packing, um, all we're really doing is that we're just combining three different images into the red, green, and blue channels. So if we look at this here right now, it looks kind of like a colorful mess. But if I toggle desaturation and then turn on just the red channel, we can see that red is just a repeatable panning element of clouds. And green is the same thing. It's just a different cloud element. And blue is, again, the same thing. So we're going to use that to help um, do some of the noise that we're doing inside of our material. Additionally, we've got the base for our sparks. And again, we're gray packing it, or it's a P mask, where we're using, in this case, red are our sparks. So I'll go ahead and toggle desaturation. Again, you know, nothing too complicated, um, just putting some different gradients in here to help uh, prevent it from being too repetitive. The green channel is going to be the little ember balls that we see in the uh, collision, and we're going to learn how to use sub UVs, excuse me, to um, be able to pick independently between one of these four. And then we also have the collision element here. And since we only see that for about maybe a tenth of a second, even less, we're only using one of these. The alpha channel is a gradient that we're going to use. And that gradient is going to drive the bend of our spark element as well. So we'll be learning how to do that as well. So with all of that said and done, let's go ahead and move on to our next chapter and start creating some sparks.